Brain Juicer webinar, Discovering the Next Big Idea, Creativity Counts, will begin in a few minutes. Discovering the next big idea, Creativity Counts, will begin in a few minutes. Brain Juicer webinar, Discovering the Next Big Idea, Creativity Counts, will begin shortly. Brain Juicer webinar, Discovering the Next Big Idea, Creativity Counts, will begin shortly.
Good afternoon, uh, everyone, and welcome to uh, this Brain Juicer webinar uh, on the subject, as you can see, of discovering the next big idea, creativity counts. Uh, I should say good morning, by the way, uh, to those of us uh, who are joining us from the uh, west coast of uh, America as well. Um, thanks very much, everyone, for coming. I'm Will Goodhand. I'm Brain Juicer's official juicy evangelist, uh, which really means doing things like this, <laughs> sharing some uh, hopefully uh, inspiring thoughts uh, about various different approaches, uh, and today, of course, about the uh, subject of innovation, why it's important, why it's important to get it right, uh, and uh, why perhaps uh, a number of the current approaches uh, don't quite deliver uh, what they might. Uh, we're very keen uh, to make these uh, things as interactive as possible. So uh, I'll talk for a bit, uh, and uh, and then um, there's an option, in fact, for you to enter your questions as you think of them as I go along. Uh, and then we have uh, my colleague uh, Chris Jones, who's actually uh, head of Juice Generation uh, here at Brain Juicer. Uh, he'll be putting your questions to me uh, uh, when I've finished the uh, the core of the webinar. So there'll be an element of the chat show uh, as well as the uh, 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 lecture or, or or, or seminar, webinar, uh, such as it is. So uh, I'll be talking about uh, why it's so important to uh, trap, uh, to tap rather into truly uh, creative people, those who have an innate ability to see things through different eyes, who can give us the fresh and lateral perspective that we need to get to fresh and potent big ideas. So, uh, first of all, what is a big idea? Uh, in our view. It's an idea that disrupts the current paradigm, a game changer that creates fundamental shifts in a category, or bigger yet, creates a whole new category. Big ideas can be born of any or all of genuine inspiration, real consumer understanding, or indeed trend spotting. They can come from anywhere, but real skill is needed to spot and then to nurture those ideas. The big idea might be the thing that people say they need. It's a real pain having to always find somewhere to plug my electric drill in, for example. It might be the thing people didn't know they needed. Uh, who actually said uh, that they needed tablet computing? Obviously, I'm now one of those who looks jealously over the shoulder of those with an iPad and thinks, wow, <laughs> actually, that is quite cool. Uh, or it might be the thing that you, the marketer, want to be the next big thing. Uh, perhaps you've got the capability, you just need to grow the need. Uh, the example there in the middle of the chart, non-sticky, sticky stuff, post-it notes, uh, a good example uh, of that. And uh, importantly, of course, and we can see the, uh, the sat nav there at the bottom, uh, the big idea is often the thing that makes life easier. Complexity, all too often, is the antithesis of innovation. So ideally, the big idea is something completely different, and if it's not different, then it must, at the very least, be better. A uh, little bit of a, a cliche uh, for you here, thinking inside the box, but uh, remembering, of course, that uh, the reason why cliches are cliches is because they're A, true, and B, widely understood. Um, Deloitte here uh, uh, pointing out that uh, only uh, four out of 10 uh, blue chip companies are truly investing in kind of category changing innovation, you know, rather than sort of uh, uh, product uh, extensions. Um, you know, thinking outside of the box, thinking outside of current constraints uh, is indeed exactly what is required to successfully get to big ideas. Um, and inevitably, uh, the ability of any of us to think outside the box is limited by the fact that we live, think, and breathe. <laughs> inside the box. Uh, we can't unknow the things we know, uh, and this does fundamentally lower our horizons. We're burdened with the curse of knowledge. How many times, quite understandably, have we heard any or all of the following? We tried that a few years ago. It didn't work. I'm not sure that would fit in our brand portfolio. The capex on that would be too high. We've never done anything like that before, or particularly perhaps. Ooh, that would be a difficult sell to management. Our assertion, on the other hand, 
is that creativity begins with opening up avenues for exploration rather than prematurely closing them down. Trying to avoid the incrementality, if you will, that says, we still need to seek the big idea, uh, but whilst we're waiting, here's a nice packaging innovation. Uh, here's quite a nice little uh, uh, cartoon uh, <laughs> about some of the uh, the next big things. Um, probably all of us be able to relate to to some degree. Um, how do we go about finding this next big idea? Well, there are a couple of standard approaches, the usual suspects, if you will. Uh, of course, we've got the company brainstorm. Who doesn't love the opportunity to dive into the world of blue sky and green field thinking and the chance to share with co-workers possible future directions of your company and the chance to actually be a part of that? See that? We did that. In all genuineness, the company brainstorm is a great way to team build and get consensus. But is it really the most creative? We've all heard too many stories of disappointing brainstorms where the same ideas seem to come up year after year. A brainstorm with a room full of folks who may be brilliant at their jobs, but just not perhaps the most natural creatives. And that's when what we call at Brain Juicer the double bind of brainstorming can kick in. Because brainstorming is so good at team bonding and generating buy-in, the workshop can often end up generating terrific buy-in to some magnificently mediocre ideas. How incredibly frustrating for everybody concerned. Everybody's trying to do their best for the company. All this money, all this time's being spent, but ah, is, there, is there some other way where maybe we could just tweak the process, change it, make it more creative? Uh, you know, the wall of death of post-it notes, who hasn't stared fuzzy-eyed at it, trying to make sense of the beautiful mind-style vista, all it needs is a bit of wool tied around in a, in a, in a, in a spider's web. Um, you know, when you look at a wall like this, all too often, uh, too many of the ideas uh, will most likely be variations uh, on the current situation. Why is that? Because everybody in the brainstorming huddle is cursed with knowledge. It just can't, you know, with the best will in the world, change the eyes through which they see the world. So, you could perhaps call in the experts, the people whose very job it is to think outside the box. They get paid to live outside the box. Uh, but the problem is that in truth, they don't live outside the box. Or if they do, they live so close to it that it can obliterate the view and somewhat distort their field of vision. All too often it can lead to a law of diminishing returns. Yes, innovation is still happening, but it's lumbering forwards rather than leaping ahead. The expert skills are well known, but their ability to fresh start think can be hampered by not being able to unknow what they already know. Again, the curse of knowledge raising its ugly head as the Zen master pictured there uh, muses for us. So how can we remedy this subconscious blinkered thinking? Well, more and more people are beginning to look beyond the traditional sources for inspiration. Crowdsourcing is becoming increasingly popular. Makes perfect sense. Here you have a group of people, hopefully engaged and articulate people, who've signed up to work with and help improve brands. So they can give you an inside view on their own world uh, and give you access to deeper, better understanding, helping you better get to grips with the needs they have, uh, especially, of course, uh, the unmet needs. Only thing is, of course, many of the current crowdsourcing communities are based around influential people, not necessarily genuinely creative people. You know, there is a difference. They may be uh, vociferous, they may be early adopters, um, but are they really able to generate the new thinking rather than just subscribe to it after it's happened? Uh, are they not more adaptive uh, than outright innovative? Uh, just because somebody picks something up early, uh, there's every chance that that is displaying a behavior, yes, uh, but not necessarily uh, signaling uh, a talent. 
uh, you may be familiar with, and uh, I'm not going to use the swear word that heralds uh, the start of the title of this TV series, so let's call it Beep, My Dad Says, uh, but it's a, uh, a show which actually began uh, with Justin Holpern's wonderfully perceptive tweet, uh, which went as follows. Son, no one gives a damn about all the things your cell phone does. You didn't invent it. You just bought it. Anybody can do that. Um, so quite a quite a crisp uh, summing up there. Uh, take the story uh, of the tourist who was asking for directions to the Sun Studio in Memphis. If you want to get to Sun Studio, apologies for the accent, by the way, you don't want to be starting from here. Came the laconic response. And whilst no doubt annoying at the time. <laughs> It is a fair point. If you don't start in the right place, you make it much more difficult to get to where you want or need to get to. And most pertinently, of course, your guide may not be able to think beyond the confines of their own route, so they're unable to put themselves in the situation where they need to imagine a new start point. So there we are, quite a few, uh, quite a few points there. Uh, probably time for me to introduce you to our juicy world uh, of creativity, uh, a creativity that can challenge existing category perceptions, and a creativity that we humbly submit brings the fresh thinking you need to generate breathtaking ideas, those next big ideas we all seek. Interestingly, it's a creativity which is both naturally occurring and democratic, and it's a creativity that exists in a remarkably box-free world. So, uh, it all hinges, of course, uh, on finding and identifying the truly creative people amongst each and every one of us. Uh, our view is that creativity is a talent like any other. And like other talents, true excellence is the preserve of the few. And, in order to attain mastery of such talent, you need to practice it, and you need to stretch it. Firstly then, how do we find really creative people? Unlike many other co-creation approaches, we use a test, placing the emphasis first and foremost on the creation before we get to the co bit. Uh, so we start with establishing how creative people are. The test is online, tells us not only how creative someone is, but also the type of creativity they display. It lasts approximately 20 minutes, and the results are assessed by our experts here at BrainJuicer. We use a mixture of word association, idea exercises, and problem solving, so we get a multi-dimensional understanding uh, of their creative skills. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, depending on where you are, you may be familiar with this expression, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Uh, so as well as all those other tests, the key thing is, right, let's give these guys a challenge and let's see how well they do. So we set this challenge, one of, one of the uh, uh, ones, example given here, uh, please list the most clever, interesting and unusual ways you would change this toy so that children would have more fun playing with it. And we show them the picture uh, of the toy elephant there. Um, and. Uh, as you can see, if we look on the scale across the bottom, from lights are off to incandescent, um, you can see the, uh, uh, the bright uh, uh, creatives coming up with far more uh, abstract ideas, being far more creative. So um, we have uh, a team of, uh, of experts here who pick through all of these ideas, uh, and they actually score the ideas. So if someone's come up with a really great idea, they get uh, scored a six. Uh, if someone's come up with an idea like, oh, you could make the ears bigger, uh, they get scored with a big fat zero. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, really, actually, a lot of it finally coming down to how good are they when given a challenge, you know, and in this format as well. So they've, they've done it online, so we know that they're likely to be able to repeat that uh, in, in the future. Uh, so it's a tough one, and only the limited few get through. Uh, on average, only 6% uh, of the population qualify uh, as highly creative, so uh, hence the name, uh, Creative Sixers. Uh, early on, 
uh, I talked about uh, starting in uh, different places and taking a, a lateral rather than a literal point of view. Uh, and these are the very reasons that we use uh, these creative sixes uh, for ideation. They allow us to think in new ways, to immerse ourselves in their imaginative thinking, and forget for a while all those things we know. Uh, those things that unwittingly uh, have restricted us from freeing up our own thinking. And fundamentally, of course, creative sixes are more creative than most of us. So it makes sense to tap into what they're good at, uh, leaving us more time to do the things uh, that we're better at. Uh, Albert Einstein is our emblem uh, for creative sixes uh, because so much of what he did was pure creativity. It was in the field of science, fair enough, uh, but what he saw was a world of opportunities where others only saw problems. Uh, or worse yet, uh, saw nothing at all except perhaps the inside of lots of boxes. Um, for us, uh, the quote here from the great man himself sums it up. Innovation is not the product of logical thought, although the result is tied to logical structure. And I guess here's the, the reassurance and the clarification, if you like, if you're listening and thinking, uh, goodness me, how do you then fit that in within the corporation? Um, absolutely. You know, we recognize wholeheartedly in this area of applied creativity, um, you know, you need to then harness those ideas um, by the precise uh, to make sure that they really do uh, come out working uh, at the other end. Uh, part of that then uh, is making sure uh, that we use both left and right brain thinkers. Uh, we get them working together uh, in what we call a, a creative cascade. Uh, within the community so they can share uh, and build ideas. And then as we get down the process, we start to uh, shape the ideas. And Brain Juicer, uh, our own team, uh, uh, we make use of left and right brainers as well, uh, uh, both as we're working with the sixers in, in the community and probing and building, uh, but then also when we take those ideas on uh, and make them more structured uh, in the, uh, as we overlay the client's needs. Um, but always remembering uh, that we're in new territory thanks to uh, what the Sixers have done. Uh, and inevitably, of course, uh, our clients uh, also have uh, left and right brain skills within their organizations. So we can leverage that too uh, by working together with them to uh, uh, hone uh, and harness the ideas. Just a little bit of an uh, example coming up now from uh, in the community itself. Uh, we can see um, a uh, innovator type person making an initial uh, suggestion, presumably the project around you know, fresh ways of banking, uh, uh, and uh, she suggested some kind of banking booth, uh, an interactive touch screen booth, um, you know, either in a bank or you know somewhere more uh, accessible, uh, and then we can see an adapter coming in, the wonderfully named uh, Burger Lady, uh, and uh, you know she's sort of suggesting. Um, uh, not that you'd be able to eat a burger in the cubicle, thankfully, uh, but in you know a helpful suggestion uh, about uh, uh, kind of uh, security measures, and then you can see that interaction uh, with the uh, innovator person coming back and sort of building and working together. And it's interesting to see. We see this a lot. You know, the only connection between these folks um, is the fact that they've passed uh, a creativity test, um, but they get on with each other uh, and they're very supportive of each other's ideas. So, there we are. Um, three clear uh, stages. Um, you know, the creative sixes uh, to come up with the raw creative thinking, uh, spotting ideas in places that others might not have thought to look, um, but then a brain juicer taking these ideas on uh, and building them into creative working outline concepts, but then crucially as well, uh, the client team uh, working with us to home in on uh, and further build on uh, the winning ideas. And of course, uh, as you'd hope, a little bit of a case study here. We did a head-to-head -head, uh, experiment um, and uh, we, we took um, the sort of traditional approach, if you like, on, on the right, standard approach, uh, using external MPD agencies uh, and uh, internal team brainstormings. Uh, took rather longer than, uh, than our approach, as you can see. Uh, we used uh, our creative sixes, using uh, 50 of them, uh, to generate 50 unique ideas. Um, there'd probably been more than that to start with, but as you go through the honing process, of course, coming down. 
and fascinating uh, thing, lots of ideas generated by the creatives. You can see uh, there, links three, um, the original idea that one of the creative sixes came up with was a can of uh, deodorant, antiperspirant, where you'd be able to turn a switch and have uh, fragrance one, fragrance two, or turn it again, and you'd actually get a mix of the two. So, you know, really interesting creative idea, not been done before. Um, in the final analysis, uh, when it came to uh, production, it wasn't quite feasible, presumably on grounds of cost and complexity, to deliver it within a single can, but instead uh, they produced two fragrances that you could buy together, spray them on together, and you get a third uh, different uh, fragrance. So, uh, you know, one that's actually gone into uh, production. The very interesting thing, if I can show you uh, on the next slide, uh, here are uh, the outputs um, of a, a screening of the ideas that came out uh, using the wisdom of the crowds methodology. So, uh, uh, a large uh, crowd um, buying and selling shares. Uh, in the ideas. You can see on the left the ones with the big green bars, those are ones uh, denoting the percentage of uh, respondents who doubled their imaginary shares because they felt that this idea uh, would succeed most in the market. You can see through to the right the spread, lots of red on the right hand side, so those are uh, ones where respondents are selling their shares in the uh, idea uh, because they don't think it will succeed. And you can see the dramatic, uh, uh, we've highlighted the um, the ones that the Sixers came up with, with Einstein's face, uh, and, uh, and you can see that actually you know, six, uh, uh, the top six ideas um, being uh, are the ones that the creative Sixers came up with. And as I say, uh, you know, certainly at least one of them uh, being launched and becoming a success. So, you know, quite a, uh, quite a good uh, demonstration of the, of the power of the Sixers to bring fresh creativity. Um, but as I said, not just about the creativity, it's also, of course, uh, about having structure to the approach. So how does it work? First of all, we write a creative brief with the client team, which is typically quite succinct and high level. Uh, we send that out to 30 to 50 creative sixers, uh, each of whom uh, we ask to come up with uh, at least eight ideas, uh, which they then share with us uh, and with other creatives in the community. Uh, the ideas are built on by other creatives uh, and they're then refined within the community uh, for about 10 days. We at uh, BrainJuicer then take the ideas, review all of them, merge some of them as necessary, filter some out, use others as uh, start points for new avenues of thought, uh, and uh, at the end of that stage uh, we've gone from a, you know, a huge number of ideas perhaps up to 400 or so, uh, and distilled them down to 40 to 50 early stage concepts. So, you know, something to work with. Uh, then it's time for what we call the harvest workshop. So uh, we get the concepts illustrated by a professional visualizer, uh, put them on big show cards, uh, which we can then use as stimulus in the workshop. It's a live event. Uh, we're involving 10 to 15 clients with brain juicer facilitators, reviewing each of the ideas, subjecting them to uh, a scrutiny. So, you know, you can see very clearly um, uh, the, the process is certainly not anti-getting people together in a room, but it's getting them together at the right time to say, okay, wow, we've had this fresh injection of creativity, now let's bring it down, let's make it real for the organization, let's scrutinize it, let's say, yeah, sure, we can do this, uh, we could do that, and that's going to be slightly longer term. By all means, do all of that, uh, but then you're really harnessing the power uh, of getting the team together, because then you're using it for what that sort of thing is great for getting the buy-in, moving forward, uh, and people working together. Um, but we've had the injection of creativity first. Uh, what have we used it for? Uh, over the past three years, uh, you can see uh, different examples here. New product ideas have been generated by the Sixers, like the one we were just talking about. Uh, having a fresh look at the category as a whole, uh, looking at uh, improved or new service offerings, uh, advertising ideas uh, across media, uh, and uh, naming as well, uh, both for existing products uh, or indeed for product concepts. I mean, you know, quite a lot of varied 
uh, variety there, uh, you'd say. But again, that's the virtue of having these creatives who are, you know, they're non. Uh, uh, industry uh, natives, if you like, so they can range freely and the, the, the only reason for having them is that they're magnificently creative uh, and they can really get outside uh, the box. Um, so uh, just a reminder before I'm going to do a quick summary now, but just before I do, uh, if you have questions, please do be typing them in. Chris is uh, limbering up to field them. Uh, in the meantime, uh, to conclude then, if you want to find the next big idea, Try remembering the following. Uh, creativity is a talent. Not all of us have it. Creativity has many dimensions that uh, we should play to our strengths. Um, you know, some people are good at spotting and shaping great ideas, you know, whereas others are good at originating them in the first place. And in fact, uh, you know, all of those things are incredibly important. Uh, Co-creation is the way of the future, uh, but uh, you know, it only pays dividends if you co-create with the right people. Uh, rather than getting uh, trapped, uh, as I say, in that sort of double bind uh, of brainstorming. Uh, creativity and innovation are a team effort, it's true, uh, but it's who's playing which role in the team uh, that really counts. Uh, and finally, uh, perhaps to uh, acknowledge and be honest, creativity can be painful. Uh, so why not let those who are good at it and really enjoy it uh, do some of the heavy lifting for you? Big ideas don't just happen, uh, we need to make them happen. Uh, and the best way of doing that is finding and using people who've got the talent to create and who are untroubled uh, by that uh, curse of knowledge. Um, so uh, I hope I haven't cursed you with too much knowledge. <laughs> uh, just the right amount, fingers crossed. Um, it's uh, time uh, for your uh, questions, so uh, I'll pass over to uh, uh, Chris to uh, uh, let me know what you've been asking. Yes, thank you very much, Will. Um, quite a few questions come in, um, in no particular order other than the way I've noted them down. Um, first off, um, do you have a base of sixes ready to go? Yes, we do. Um, we have uh, particularly uh, large panels in uh, the UK, US and Germany, um, but we've actually been uh, um, progressing very strongly with a couple of, uh, <laughs> I suppose you might even say groundbreaking initiatives. So we've, we've actually produced a viral version um, of the creativity test uh, that I was telling you about uh, before with the different tests and the elephant uh, thing because um, you know it, it feels like the the sort of thing that can kind of catch on because we give people some feedback on the type of creative they are and that sort of thing that's very interesting to people so we've rolled that out across a number of countries uh, and we've also been doing a specific panel building exercise in LATAM. So I think uh, you know if people come to us with a with a country, and we've recently had a, a client coming to us about Thailand, for example, um, we're we're very able to service those needs, and uh, and frequently uh, you know we'll be doing multi-country projects. So we'll be covering a number of countries at, at the same time um, with uh, creatives in each of those. Okay. Thank you. Um, and uh, as, a, as a build on that, another question which starts with, are you offering access to your Creative Sixes or do we have to find them ourselves? Well, j just to pick up on that point, we do actually offer for companies screening within their organization for Sixes. So if you actually do want an internal Sixer skill set, uh, we can do that for you. Um, okay, another question. Um, what is your process for generating the starting point for ideation? Oh, well, um, I will, uh, I'll answer the question as I understand it, and uh, if I haven't answered it properly, uh, <laughs> ask, uh, ask again, type in and tell me I haven't. Um, uh, if, if I'm right in understanding you, um, in terms of how we, uh, we brief uh, the creatives. I mean, to be clear, the starting point is very much, you know, as I've said, you start the process with the creative sixes, um, but briefing is absolutely key. Um, you know, uh, we learned several things when we, we embarked on this process, and we actually did some, as you'd expect of a, a, a blue chip market research company, we did some back-to-back -back tests, and we found uh, uh, we, we had one cell where we only asked the creatives to come up with some ideas, and we had another cell where we forced them uh, to generate eight to ten ideas. And you know what? 
the, uh, the quality of the ideas, not just the number, but the quality of the ideas coming out when we forced them to come up with eight to ten ideas was massively improved because it's the you know the first five are easy. I'll oh, do this, do that, blah blah blah. But then it's like, ah, oh, how on earth am I going to fill these eight gaps where I need to put ideas in? So actually kind of pushing people and the other uh, test that we did was how much time we gave them and we found that actually giving them three or four days to mull it over um, uh, made a real difference again because you know that's how creatives work they need it to be sort of mulling over subconsciously in, in their mind um, and also key is sharing with them as much as you can what you've already done um, so that they know oh no not that you know Okay, you know, they've already done that because then they're having to push themselves even even harder. So their own creativity is unconstrained, if you like. But saying you know we've already thought of these is you know means that they're starting from a slightly higher point. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and another question is with regard to the sixes themselves: um, do they need to be category aware, or can they be generalists? Well, um, pretty much uh, generalists. Um, you know, um, they have this unique and rare skill, as we say, top six percent of the population for creativity. Uh, and our experience is, whichever walk of life they come from, uh, they've proved incredibly effective at whatever category um, we, we've set them to work on. I mean, even to the extent we've done some work for um, pharmaceutical companies, um, a study that we presented at um, FMRA, if I'm saying it right, the uh, uh, annual pharmaceutical conference, um, where uh, we asked the Creative Sixers to come up with communications routes um, for a, uh, a drug to combat diabetes, uh, to target both uh, medical professionals and, <coughs> excuse me, end users um, of the drug. And, you know, it was fantastic because what you saw was they managed to import kind of general human insights about relationships and people and apply them brilliantly to this kind of, obviously what you'd expect to be quite a dry and esoteric topic um, of the diabetes drug. So, no, they seem to be able to tackle it quite well. Okay. Um, another question is with regard to how adaptable the creatives are. Um, so, for example, um, the question here is, uh, can we expect creative ideas on elephants or consumer services or healthcare devices from the same team? Um, yes, uh, the answer is yes. I mean, of course, they may not be exactly the uh, uh, the same thirty or fifty people each time. Um, but again, uh, we've we I think I think the thing to bear in mind is you know our test. It, again, it's not just how good are you at the matchstick game, you know, solving what shape this is, looking at all the matches or moving them all around so you've used them all to build a house or whatever the, the test is. We've not just done that. When we've profiled these people, we've given them that elephant test. So we, we've shown in an environment where you're sat at your computer and we've asked you to ideate, how do you respond? So they are, uh, you know, the very method of profiling means that they're kind of fit for um, this purpose. Uh, and then we tend to find that, you know, whichever uh, disparate team of 30 to 50 of them come together in the community, uh, we've always found them very good at kind of bouncing ideas off each other and generating ideas, whatever the uh, category area. Okay, a couple more. Um, uh, someone here is involved in um, agriculture and wants to know if Creative Sixers could ideate in a in an area like that, or are they specifically limited to uh, FMCG, packaged goods, you no know, consumer durables and the like? Um, well, uh, that's a lovely question. We have actually, uh, <laughs> um, without uh, uh, giving away uh, too much, we, we've done um, a project recently for um, a, a sort of vegetable uh, organization. And um, again, I can't say uh, you know the, the the ideas that they came up with, but you know it was breathtaking stuff, and you know in all genuineness, certainly stuff I would have struggled to come up with. But you know they they were they were operating, as I say, outside of the box, looking at things afresh, bringing in the influences from their own lives, uh, and you know very much that kind of sort of diagonal logic, if you like, that you see with with, with great creativity, 
uh, and came out with some wonderful ideas, you know, refreshing uh, and challenging um, about, you know, what we know about how you could sell vegetables, position them, um, and, you know, both literally in the supermarket uh, is one thing, and generally um, quite remarkable. So, uh, you know, what, whatever it is, you know, say even if it's getting quite technical, um, they seem to be able to uh, get a get a grip on it. Um, okay, um, two more questions. One of which will be for you, Will, and one for um, I think we might have to throw it open because it is quite a uh, quite a difficult one to answer, shooting from the hip. But maybe some other people uh, can help us. The first one is: um, Is creativity the preserve of small organisations? Ha ah, ha. Well, <laughs> um, our answer actually is no. Um, you know, in the end, uh, it, it really just comes down to the appetite um, for uh, being creative. I mean, you know, there is something, uh, of course, um, inherently disruptive uh, about uh, creativity, you know, and that's where, of course, uh, people sometimes, uh, uh, you know, fear that that may be incompatible uh, with the corporation. Um, so I guess, uh, you know, you need to be, uh, you need to be up for it in that sense, but we've you know we've found corporations uh, and, and Chris mentioned you know corporations who've asked us to identify the more disruptive elements uh, for obviously for good reasons rather than bad um, you know so that they can use them as a creative resource within the organisation. So um, certainly not. And, and the other thing to, to stress, as I kind of mentioned before, um, is that the process does require a variety of mindsets. So. And not just being good at having ideas, uh, but then you know also having people who can spot great ideas, uh, shape and adapt them. You know, and again, if you can identify them, uh, you know, certainly within our teams as we've done at Brainjuice to help that process, but also within your corporation, you know, fantastic. We can get it all uh, uh, working in a you know really positive way that can really land the great ideas that the, the sixes have generated. Okay, this will be the final question because uh, time okay. is pushing, um, which is um, uh, we talked at the start about big ideas. And this is a, a great question. Like, do you have an example of a big idea launched in 2010, excepting, of course, the iPad? Now, um, I've got one, um, Digivisuals, but I think that's very specific to us. Um, uh, but I, I have to confess, this probably proves why this is so essential, because I'm struggling to think of anything else beyond that. <laughs> I did think Spotify, but I think that was 2009. Yeah. Um, get, a, get a quick, get a quick uh, uh, juicer out to the Creative Six. Absolutely. So we'll, yes. we'll, we'll be overwhelmed uh, um, with these. No, that's, a great, that's a great question. Thanks for, uh, <laughs> thanks for asking it. Um, yeah, I would probably go with the iPad if my year, if my year was... Uh, uh, was correct, um, but it'd be worthwhile if people who've actually been listening in have got any any thoughts, and we can see right. Okay, so this is what is defined as a as a, yeah. a as a big idea. We'd probably be rather shocked, or maybe not, by the paucity of um, big ideas. Big ideas that actually popped up last year. Mm. Well, if you if you have one in mind, you can use. Uh, I'll give. Um, you license to misuse the question box. You can write instead. You can write in the big idea. That would be very interesting for uh, for us to have a look. Or you're you're welcome to email in. There's uh, there's my uh, details there. And you know, and please do drop me a line if you just want to carry on the or say carry on the dialogue. It's been mostly a monologue from my side, but uh, you know, please do uh, email if you want to uh, to carry on the discussion. Um, I hope, oh, we've, uh, we've got one in very a very oh, quick oh, one. Oh, is oh. Groupon a big idea? Yeah. Well, three billion dollars worth of good idea, I think that one is. Yes. Great, great, great. Quick off the mark. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, look. Um, thanks very much, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for listening. I hope. Uh, hope it's been interesting and enjoyable. Uh, and as I say, please do uh, uh, keep in touch with us um, if you want to carry on the discussion. Any other questions that you have, just uh, uh, drop us a line. And uh, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Cheers. <laughs>